All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am extremely fortunate to be following up on a fantastic panel discussion. What a panel, Flipkart, Lenskart, RBL Bank, Misho. Uh, apart from the brand, you know, the, the discussion was very rich. In fact, a lot of my presentation is about the discussion that actually happened right now and you will you will figure that out how and i had requested for a timer of 25 i can see it is still 20. all right so my topic is customer experience moving the needle through an open secret my name is eklak mispronounced eklak one tenth of a million pronounced correctly eklak means good behavior my friends say there's a one in ten million chance of me having good behavior uh, I am the CIO of Jubilant Foodworks, which handles brands like Domino's, Dunkin's, Popeye's. But let's get started real quick. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a customer and just be any customer. You, all of you are customers, all right? And then think about one of the best experiences you have had and one of the worst experiences you have had as a customer. Just have a think about it and send it to anybody, any of the ET CIO folks, okay? With a, with a time because I'm going to put a bet, okay? There will be, and the bet is, that at least 50% of the best and the worst experiences will have a common theme. And that is the common theme, that is the open secret that I'm going to disclose with you, to you. Yeah, after the session, you're going to say, yaar, iske liye bulaya. But you know what I'm going to talk about, but it's just that we don't do it consciously. When we talk about customer experience, there are just a zillion of things to talk about. Search Google, this is the diagram you'll get for customer experience. Extremely confusing, but all of these matter in customer experience, right? But then somebody uh, spoke about, I think it was Mr. Raghunath from ITC Infotech, said it is quantitative, but it is also qualitative. You know, it's touch, feel. It's kind of like water. And how do you hold water, right? There's just no way to hold water. But today, I'm going to share an open secret with you. It's a secret that is not a secret. And that will allow you to get your hands around customer experience. So let's understand customer experience a little bit. I've dumbed it down, simplified it for consumption and to make a point, okay? First, what, what adds up to customer experience? There were many, many points made. All of them, I believe, will converge to these five aspects that I'm going to talk to you about. First and foremost, product or service. Somebody mentioned, and actually, whether somebody mentions or not, if you do not have a good product or service, forget about anything else with customer experience. Forget everything else. Your product or your service must be good, without which no effort around customer experience is going to matter, right? Then you got to price it correctly, right? You got a great product and service, but you have priced it incorrectly. Again, no amount of customer experience is going to matter for a product or service that is incorrectly priced for the customer, all right? And when you, when you, when you actually talk about price and when you talk about customer experience, intuitively we would think better customer experience means higher cost, right? It's not true. Actually, better customer experience can result from lower costs. I've given some examples of what happens in a food business and how we cut costs so as to be able to maintain a competitive price, right? And price is, sorry, cost is a very important factor in price, right? And price is very important for customer experience. Behavior, great product, great service, good price, but rude behavior. Uh, there, was a, there was a time when a particular airline, a low-cost airline, the behavior was very rude, and they saw a decline in business. I'm not going to mention that airline in this, 
in this forum, but you all know who I'm talking about. And then there is, of course, the trust, right? So if you don't trust a brand, your product could be good, your behavior could be good, your pricing could be good, but I don't trust you, right? I don't trust you with my data. I don't trust that you are going to fulfill what you're going to say. And then therefore, again, customer experience does not matter if customers do not trust you. But then I'm not here to talk about product, service, price, trust, or behavior. All of this you know, right? What any, anybody wants to guess what the fifth area could be for customer experience? Anybody wants to hazard a guess? What have we missed from a customer experience point of view? Sorry? Employee enablement? Data privacy? Data privacy, I would, I would put it as, as trust. At some point, I'll try and understand how employee enablement will go to customer experience. I know there's an indirect linkage. I agree with that. Any, any other guesses? Sorry? Feedback, OK. Good, feedback. OK, feedback is related, yes. On time. OK, on time, engagement, feedback. Sorry, availability. All right. So keep these in mind. Availability, on time, all of that can be clubbed under one theme. That is the focus of my presentation today, and that is the customer effort. OK? And I, I, I'll, I'll delve into customer effort a little bit, but before I go there, let me just quickly say that product, price, behavior, and hygiene, sorry, behavior and trust are a given. They are part of business strategy. But customer effort is something that you can work on every day, and I'll show you how. Okay? Our focus today is customer effort, but I'm going to share with you a story. There was a king, happy king, with a happy kingdom, but he grew bold, bald, right? And he said, look, I want people in this kingdom who have a cure for baldness to come to me and give me the medicine for curing my baldness. And if you are not able to cure, I'll execute you. And he executed several people, right? Before a common man came along, he had a small bottle of oil, and he said, I have a cure for your baldness. The king said, wow, really? Itne dino ke baad, thik hai, batao bhai, kaise? So he said, all you have to do is apply this oil on your head, but there is just one condition. Don't think about a mango while applying the oil, OK? So the king said, oh, easy, took it. And then every time he applied the oil, I do not have to think about the mango. And guess what he did? Right? So similarly, I, I want you to know that although I'm going to be talking about effort, please do not forget the other aspects of customer experience. Those are equally, equally important. Now, there are two types of customer effort. One is physical, one is mental. I can see the timer now, and it is giving me some mental anxiety. So I'll rush through this. So somebody spoke about, remember the days in the bank? We used to go, get a token from one counter, stand in queue with another, then go to the third one. And even now, if you are a customer of two, three banks, you know the internet banking of one is better than the other. You know how? because the number of clicks it requires for you to do a transaction. And that simply is effort, right? The physical effort. Then another one, all of you live in a condominium or some place. If you have a broken tap, the number of calls you have to make to the maintenance help desk, first to get the guy, then for the guy to guess, then the guy will come back, then he will repair. It will still not be repaired, then you'll call again. So the number of times you have to follow up to get something done contributes to customer experience. And that is also effort on part of the customer. Any one of you get a SMS called get easy, hassle-free home loans? Yeah? OK, let me tell you what that is about. That is about all these calls. OK? You apply for a home loan. 
there will be a verification call, there is a lawyer that will call, there will be the sales team that will call, there will be the risk team that will call. All of them calling you in an uncoordinated manner, right? So I say the meaning of easy, hassle-free home loans is we will bother you, we'll hassle you when you're free. Because that's how many calls you have to field. And then a number of sites and assets used. Somebody spoke about omni-channel. So if you apply, they say, first go to this bank branch, do this, then you go to this website, then you download this mobile app. And of course, at some places where you go, if you want to get a refund or return something, you have to go to two, three counters before that transaction is concluded. So that's enough on physical effort. Oh, so there's one more. The number of persons you have to interact with. Tata Sky, sorry if anybody is a Tata Sky fan or a Tata Sky employee here. I call the call center, then I tell my problem, then they pass it on to the supervisor on the field, and you have to explain the problem again. Then the engineer comes, you have to explain the problem all over again. Right? And the number of people that you have to interact with independently and explain the same problem also leads to customer effort. This is all effort on the part of the customer. Right? Then let's talk about the mental effort. The biggest mental effort, any guesses? What is the biggest mental effort for a customer? The clue is in wh what I spoke about. And somebody also mentioned. Waiting time. This lady has grown old waiting for the product. Uh, Domino solved for this 20 years ago. They said the customers will not have to worry about the waiting time, 30 minutes are free. They built their business on, on top of this. And again, I want to make my point. 30 minutes of free would not have worked if it was not a great product, it was not priced correctly, if you did not behave well, and people did not trust. But apart from that, Domino's also solved for the mental effort of waiting. You have to wait maximum 30 minutes. I'll soon hear something more on that. Transparency. Go, go back 10 years when you ordered something. Did you know where your product was or where, you know, when it's going to arrive? Or I have bond, gone to courier websites. You, first of all, you have a code that is hexadecimal, 16 digits long. My God, you can't copy and paste it. You paste, it comes up with shipped. Hurry, shipped? Matlab kya? Uske baad. But today, you got a lot of tracking that is available. You take that for granted today. But if you do not provide transparency to the customer, it will cause mental anxiety. This is a tracker that the Domino's US does. Again, an example of how transparency helps reduce mental effort on part of the customer. Uh, and, you know, waiting time is not only about B2C, it also happens in the B2B business. You talk to any B2B business, they'll tell you uh, waiting time is a huge, huge deal for them. Clutter. Who solved for clutter? Twenty-two years ago, right? And if your website or your office or your shop is it is cluttered, it is mental effort on part of the customer because the customer doesn't know what to do, right? Now I'll, I'll tell you something interesting. All customers have to make a choice. All customers, irrespective, when they engage with you, they have to make a choice, right? And then there are two two types. One, I have already made a choice, like you know, I want to buy insurance. I want to buy life insurance. Right? or term insurance, versus a customer who's exploring, boss, I insurance, I don't know what products are. I'm talking about the second one first, when the customer hasn't made a choice. This is famously called the jam experiment done in UK. In a mall, there were two exits. On one exit, they placed 24 flavors of jam. On another, they placed six flavors of jam. Guess who sold more? Six. By how much? 20% more? 10% more, 3% conversion rate, 30% conversion rate, 10 times, right? Why? Why? Because there are many reasons, right? First, you are causing anxiety to the customer by making him choose from 24, right? Then if you pick two flavors, you have a feeling of loss of only four. You have left four on the table. You pick two flavors from 24. You have a feeling of loss of having left 22 flavors that you didn't buy. This is known as the Hicks uh, law. And it says that 
after a certain point, the number of choices offered to the customer is actually counterproductive. So be careful about you know, how many choices you give to the customer. Then there is the case where the customer has made a choice. Remember, I spoke about, I know I want to buy term insurance. Right? Here is a customer who knows that he wants to lease Toyota Corolla, comes to your website, and this is what your website looks like. Ah, he said, ah, OK, I want to buy Toyota Corolla, right? And then somebody in the panel mentioned that, hey, now customers know the history. They, they expect you to know your background. They expect you to know the choice that you have already made. So just offer the Toyota Corolla straight away. Find a way to get to know the customer choice. A lot of people do it. You have a friend who completes a sentence. Google completes. You just type in the first two letters, and it, Google will tell you what you actually want to search for. Right? That is reducing customer effort. Right? So I have spoken about it. Now, the experience that I asked you to remember, I hope you have sent it to some folks, because there is a bet. And the, this is a summary of all the physical and the mental effort that I have spoken about. But why? Why am I talking about? Customer effort, huh? The reason I'm talking about customer effort is because all of you and all of your organizations do multitude of things on customer experience, right? But then, how do you measure it? Through surveys. And somebody was just talking about the downsides of surveys. Sample-based, it's outside in. You say, I've done these five things, but you can't see those results on NPS. So what's going on? Is there an internal and a direct way of measuring customer effort? Just take all the effort spoken about. You can establish your own customer effort index. Add that, number of documents submitted. When I was with MaxLife Insurance, when we started 2014, there were 11 documents for you to get life insurance. When I left in four years, there were three documents. And I'm sure it is one document or even less. That's customer effort has come down drastically, right? So by measuring customer effort and putting an index internally to it, you are able to measure the impact of your customer experience initiatives directly without having to do sample and surveys. Unless you believe that customer effort doesn't matter for customer experience. Now let me tell you why it is an open secret. All of these products are about reducing customer effort. It's just that you did not connect the dots with reducing customer effort. What is auto read of OTP? Reduce the customer effort. What is UPI? If UPI took five minutes to transact, do you think UPI would be popular? No, it reduces the effort compared to a credit card or whatever it is, right? Search engines predictions. So that is why I say customer effort is an open secret. All of you do it. It's just that you don't consciously measure it, put a number to it, and drive it down, right? If you do that, you will be able to get your ROI on your customer experience. So as I said at the beginning, customer experience is like water, very difficult, touchy, feely to get your hands around. But then I've also spoken about you know, how you can measure and reduce customer effort that directly impacts customer experience, and therefore a way to hold water. That's all. Thank you. Hey, time's up. That's all. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>